Hello, hello. This is Adrian Igo, Capricorn Tigress of Astrology Look Inside, coming to you just with, I don't know, some astrological talk. I just had this idea. I thought, okay, so you know I'm a real old school astrologer, you know, one of those back in the day kind of astrologers. So I, you know, I have some of the old timey books that I, I keep about and of course, in most old-time astrology, um, Saturn, of course, was the ruler of everything. I mean, it pretty much ruled the roost, right, uh, of, of life. And um, it, it pretty much, we look at most astrological things based upon the angles or the quadrants that Saturn goes through at least I still do it's how I kind of get a bird's eye view what's really happening in life at that time it tells me a great deal where Saturn goes where Pluto goes where Neptune goes where Uranus goes well changes seem to follow these are long-lasting planets and when they go into certain houses and into certain areas they make lifelong changes sometimes that are irreversible. And so <clears throat> I began thinking about the changes that are occurring right now in my own life. I've actually been documenting my life for several years, for about five years really. Um, this is just a byproduct of me <laughs> being very, very much like what I'm going to discuss today. So, um, as you know, I call myself Capricorn Tigress, and, and, um, and I am a Capricorn. I am a Capricorn with Capricorn rising, and I also have Saturn in Aquarius in the first house by birth. And it is within striking distance of my Mercury, since that's also in Aquarius in my first house. And that is in mutual interception with Uranus in Virgo, which is in my eighth house. That, you know, does that make me very psychic? Well, hell to the yeah, okay? I don't know how to stop that. It's intuitive. There is a crazy mutual interception with Mercury, my communication, <clears throat> in the eighth house, deep psychological things. And if that's not enough to convince most people that I am indeed someone with some kind of mystical something or other, I, don't, I can't really quite put my finger on it either, but yeah. I have Neptune on my midheaven by about three degrees. So it sits right up at the top of my chart. It is indeed my most elevated planet, and it is in opposition to my moon and Taurus which sits on my nadir on the other side of the chart. Not quite as close, but close enough that it is making a huge, um, you know, T-square there. Because these planets both square that Saturn in Aquarius, which is the chart ruler. Saturn is the chart ruler. And so the chart ruler is square or stressed out or in friction mode with Neptune, the most elevated planet, and with the moon, which some people think is the actual ruler of the chart. So I wanted to look at this current experience we're all going through with Saturn in Capricorn because Saturn is home, right? It's home. It's, uh, and it's ruling everything right now. Saturn always rules everything anyway. Don't let the rest of them fool you. So right now, and it's at its most powerful spot, and uh, it's, it's got some help with Pluto there. Uh, it's not alone in the devastation that it can cause. Let us not 
forget that we're dealing with the great taskmaster. In tarot, it's the devil, so is Capricorn. It's one of those things that we should take very seriously. It is not um, neither of the transits, neither Pluto in Capricorn nor Saturn in Capricorn are to be laughed at. They are very serious. Okay. So I had an old time book and I wanted to just go through and see you know, I always call it old time. I'm actually making myself fun of myself when I say that. But I just wanted to see if uh, any of, you know, how this affects things. And then I've also pulled up several sites online. I personally feel like the sites online may have different information than the old time books because, well, things change. Right. By the way, in case you've ever wondered uh, what we can expect when Pluto and Saturn are officially conjunct, which, by the way, they're almost within striking distance, aren't they? I, I think Pluto is due for a retrograde. They're, they're definitely going to collide. Just be aware of this. But this is what it means when Pluto conjuncts Saturn. Change. <clears throat> change. At fundamental levels is upon you and it's best to let it happen old ideas beliefs relationships or possibly possessions may pass away to make way for a new cycle all of which may be distressing but nevertheless affords opportunity for spiritual growth and self-improvement Occult and metaphysical studies may be beneficial. Wow. And so I've been led to read that, and I'm very glad that I did. Because we're in a situation at this very moment in time where these planets are about to make this conjunction, which is very rare for Pluto and Saturn to conjunct anyway. So just know that it does deal with change at fundamental levels or you, certain things are going to pass away possibly possession i i i'm a little bit off. as i look at this i already see how this could play out for me if i my life changes or if i have to possibly move somewhere new or something like that it would be a life change wouldn't it and i would have to get rid of some things it's I, that's always in the back of my mind uh, that life could change for me at a moment's notice if I pick up and move elsewhere if my daughter gets a high paying job elsewhere or I fall in love and he wants me to move with him to elsewhere or any of those things so life is transient at times I think my life has been stagnant and that's why I'm almost positive I'm due for these, 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 okay? Now, also, one of the things that's going to be going on is that Pluto is going to be sextiling Jupiter um, along the way here, and this transit is likely to stimulate idealism, like, be, will become more idealistic, and it's more than usual which is great. I like reading this because this is actually affecting me on a personal level since Pluto is transiting in my first house, like right on my ascendant almost right now. Now, this transit is likely to stimulate your idealism more than usual. You'll be willing and able to affect reform in almost any area of your life. Reform. Though you may lean towards social reform, Hmm. In addition, your interest in your own spiritual growth will increase. Opportunities for advancement in almost any area are likely. Wow. That is a very positive thing to know about, you know, things. What, what amazes me is I, I'm hearing, I don't see, know if you've noticed this theme in spirituality. <clears throat> but on a personal level... 
I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that theme of spirituality. That's, I've been highly, highly psychic. I mean, to the point that it's freaking me out, actually. Just, I feel things. Oh, me and my, my, uh, my new beau. <laughs> uh, we had our first little fight last night. I mean, it was not even a normal kind of fight. We just couldn't, like, he's em an empath and I'm an empath. But well, we're feeling, bouncing feelings back and forth, back and forth, and neither one of us makes sense when we get excited. It's so funny. It's like I found my, my actual other self. It's funny. <laughs> it ended up, you know, he's a sweetie pie. So, you know, we made up and stuff. But it made me realize that, you know, I shouldn't really talk about deep, dark, hidden things. We were talking about he'd been engaged before and they both left him or cheated on him. Yeah. That, that emotion started pinging back and forth. Can you imagine two psychic people that was going blah, 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 blah. I couldn't tell where it was coming from. I had to hang up on him. And then I had to take the phone and take it off the hook. And then I had to go and hypnotize myself and meditate. And I, I'll tell anyone who's being highly affected by Pluto or Saturn or Neptune or even Uranus. I, I highly recommend that you um, meditate. Yeah. In fact, even YouTube, because you're probably watching this on YouTube, right? Either Facebook or YouTube or Patreon or something like that. But, you know, meditate. YouTube has lots of um, great little things. There's one guy, Thomas Hall, I love. He has a huge collection, but he's got one series where it's just like the rain. So I just let the rain fall around, you know, just play around the house all day. It's amazing. You don't even realize you're subliminally teaching yourself a new way of thinking. And, um, oh, wow. It's just what I'm talking about right now. So I, I wanted to see what it means to have the transiting moon trying my or transiting Pluto trying my moon which it is right now and it's trying my moon and it says this is a, a favorable time to deepen <coughs> your under self understanding through any means and to make improvements you deem necessary it's, all, it's like a lot what I've been just talking about right just all this spiritual stuff you may have profound psychic or emotional experiences at this time, which will also help to broaden your understanding. Wow. You know, when some people ask me, well, why would I go to you instead of someone else? I feel like for some reason I'm at an age where, I want to say the age of the wise old sage person. I don't want to become the old crone. I guess I'm the modern day. The modern day crones child are, are cougars. <laughs> Ain't no damn crones nowadays. Cougar crone. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. You know, it's funny because when I think, of, you know, with someone who's as psychic as I am, I would have been in danger probably, right? In the, in the 1600s or something because... I, how do you keep knowing stuff like that? And that would get people in trouble. But I would think that we're in a much more evolved state of life now where you understand that some people just have these, this ability. I mean, you, you what do they do? Anyway, I just wanted to find out if this Pluto thing on my son, because Pluto is actually technically on my son, if that would have anything to do with it. So let's take a look here and see what it says. Hold on, let me get a sip before I do. So Pluto, conjunct the sun. I don't know how many Pluto conjunct the sun people are out there. 
but this is for you. You must now be consciously concerned with and work hard toward getting rid of outgrown old aspects of life to make room for new. It's telling me the same thing, isn't it? Bear in mind throughout that Pluto does not reward ego trips. What you do, you must do for the good of all. But do not attempt to dominate or ride over others for any reason at all. Try to learn about yourself, who you are, and what you want to be, and what is truly outgrown and needs to be discarded. This, wow, this. This is not even where I expected to go with this. I thought I was going to be talking more about Saturn, and I guess we'll get there, but this Pluto. First of all, I just, you know, I'm in the midst of a divorce right now. And I, for me, it seemed as though it came out of the blue. But really, I knew it was coming. And I felt it, but I couldn't stop it, if that makes sense. And I also feel that I probably won't be living like I'm living right now. That means I'm... I have a feeling I won't be in this place. I don't know why. I, I'm not sure where we're headed, but I think I'm headed somewhere different. I don't know if it's, be, if it's because of my daughter or if it's because of my new boyfriend or if it's because of something. But I know I better stop not have no ego trips for myself. I know that. But I just feel like I different something you knew something different anyway and I got to be open to it and not be weirded out by it <sighs> Ooh, acceptance is hard by the way yeah. now I wanted to also look at Pluto in the first house because I've got Pluto in the first house and I'm sure there's probably some of you other caps out there that have Pluto transiting the first house right now. And some people out there may have been born with Pluto in the first house. So you might also enjoy hearing what this has to say. It says Pluto in the first house. You'll have a great desire for self-improvement and self-understanding, which you may seek through metaphysical or spiritual means. We're back to metaphysical and spiritual means again. Wow. Was I not talking about this? Meditation or physio psychotherapy would be beneficial in helping you to understand and therefore control your subconscious urges and drive. You may find yourself seeking more power and control over others, which could cause problems until you do reach more self-understanding. Now, I think I understand this completely now. Oh my gosh, I'm getting goosebumps. So, uh, I've got this big issue. I know about it. I've known about it for ages. I just don't know how to control it. I have certain ways of talking and behaving in my communication when I feel threatened or I get excited or I feel like I'm going to be abandoned or if I, you know, just any kind of fear factor comes up. I think it's all about my mindset and facing my fears internally. But what happens is I lose my ability to communicate very well. I actually usually start yelling or screaming. My voice raises. I'll talk over other people. 
and I'll just become really like aggressive in my speech pattern. I'm saying this because I don't want people to think I'm not aware of the things that I do that are really thwarting my own happiness. Now, I think I it could be probably why my husband left me. You know, I, I flamed him one of my cursing things, and the man, that was it. Well, that's fine. If that's all it takes, that means he was a willow wizard. He wasn't worth my time. He wasn't, he wasn't anything, was he? That's not love. What the hell is that? So anyway, that's what Pluto does. See, Pluto washes things like that, flimsy things like that, that mean nothing away. Because imagine putting your trust in someone who can throw you away because of a flame text. You can't put your trust in someone like that. That person needed to leave my life. And so this is a good thing. The other thing is, well, you know, I think for myself, I was really lucky because I was someone who studied astrology for so many years and learned so much over so <clears throat> much time that I have been put in a position or I find myself often in a position where people do come to me for advice and I do get to tell or show other people what to do. The thing is, if I did not have that, I can see how it could become horribly overbearing. If that's not directed in a way that is cohesive with the rest of the world, because you can't go around directing others, you know, what to do and how to do it and where to go and whatever. Now, also, I would suggest that if you're someone with this Pluto um, first house situation, that you're someone who's put yourself in a position of power. I don't know exactly how you're going to do that. <clears throat> I found by myself being in this situation where I'm working independently than working you know, for a boss and then reporting to this one, reporting to that one. That helps me. Um, for everyone, there may be different ways that you can handle that and that will work for you. But I do have a feeling that's going to be um, a situation. And I think also just coming to reality, like I have the ability to say, yeah, I've got this weird issue. It cropped up in my new relationship just like it cropped up in my old relationship. It didn't even belong there. But I felt, you know, he being an F, he was pushing back feelings because we were talking about something very emotional. And then I start pushing back feelings that, you know, because really his emotions from his past have nothing to do with me in 2018. Like no matter how emotional he got it was not my responsibility to accept those emotions at all i rejected those emotions because they're not mine and i didn't need to do that and my first thought was oh my gosh i'm feeling overburdened because there was the pitch started going and we started yelling and i'm like what is going on I'm feeling overburdened by this emotion that I knew wasn't mine because I wasn't telling the story. Projection it happens, especially if you're really connected with your partner. I told him we just won't talk about that. Why talk about it? Some, obviously, it's way too painful for him to talk about, and we're the emotion. It's too much bouncing back and forth for me to handle and him to handle because I'm still too emotionally wounded from my own failed relationship. So we we're both talking about our failed relationship. Ugh, what an ugly subject. So what I said to him is something very much, it's very Abraham Hicks of me, I guess. But Abraham Hicks has a theory that we do we must always do what makes us feel good. If you're in a conversation and you realize, oh my gosh, this conversation is not making me feel good, 
take a break from the conversation. Walk away, do like I did. Go meditate. Get yourself right. Why persist in a conversation that's leading to maybe the death, you know, dissolution of something you cherish? I cherish my relationship with my boyfriend. I do. I I really like him. I, actually, I, I I we love each other. So you know that type of thing. Now here's something that's amazing. This is Neptune trying midheaven, which is something I also have right now. So some of you out there might have Neptune trying midheaven. And if you have that, it's so weird when you think about what I just said. It says self-sacrifice for the needs of others may well be your guideline now. <clears throat> Don't totally neglect your own needs, which are in also important, though. Also, your interest in the mystical or spiritual will be enhanced. And you may have psychic experiences. There we go again. Obviously, I'm. that's what I'm supposed to do. Because I'm looking here, because I also have Neptune sextile my ascendant. Exactly, right now, actually. Uh, your intuitive awareness of others will increase. And so will your compassion. Old acquaintances will suddenly mean more to you. But you may over out a little idolize new ones Ooh. which of course is non-productive for either of you don't over idolize anyone call them out on their shit they're doing it well your interest in the spiritual metaphysical aspects of life will increase you can learn a great deal even from aspects of your daily life, if you pay attention. It's so weird that I'm doing what I'm doing right now, isn't it? Because obviously, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. Uh, and by birth, I've got Neptune conjunct midheaven. Excuse me, I'm looking like Einstein over here. You may suddenly feel confused, wondering if you've been heading in the wrong direction all this time. Maybe you have, but also maybe not. Wait until this transit is over and make any important to make any important decisions. Mystical philosophies may attract you, and you can learn a great deal under this transit if you stay open and quite open, uh, quite and quit being so hard on yourself. And again, make no hard and fast com commitments at this time. I guess that's the way I should live my life, right? <clears throat> wow. And Neptune sextile Pluto. I've got that by birth as well as by transit. Your intuitive powers are enhanced now, and you're able to see into and understand your own subconscious extremely well. If you try, many things in your life will be falling away now in preparation for a new beginning. It's best to let them go and look forward to the next cycle. Wow, I keep getting this. I don't want to keep saying it or thinking it, but I think it's going to happen. Wow. Hmm. Neptune try Neptune right now. This time of spiritual harmony with yourself and with others usually occurs around age 55. Well, I guess I told my age. Happy birthday to me, yo. Whether conscious of it or not, you become more understanding and empathetic. You may experience spiritual or mystical insights or awakenings and a sense of yourself in a larger 
larger universe may emerge. Also, your interest in religion may be revived. This is amazing. I agree with everything thus far. Truly. It's amazing. Okay, so I don't want to get too far off because really... I didn't really set out to discuss so much Pluto, and I'm already a half an hour in. You know what I'm going to do, you guys? I know I said this was going to be about Saturn, but let me take a break, okay, because I, this is a half an hour. This is going to be a two-parter. That's all there is to it. This is a two-parter. So we've done now the Pluto. We've looked at Pluto, right? Pluto as it is affecting the first house of, well, if you're Capricorn, Capricorn rising, if you're someone who was maybe born with Pluto in and around your first house, this would have been an interesting conversation. So this was really what this whole focus was about, was it turned out to be more about Pluto in Capricorn or Pluto in the first house. And so I hope that anyone who has this aspect has been led to watch this video and get something out of this. You Capricorns and Cap Risings, I, I hope you were able to pull something out of this here. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. And if you haven't, please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. And go and subscribe to our uh, website at astrology a look inside.com. Much love and light to you all.